Okay, so we have one minute at 200 Jury Church for practice before your mock. Members of the jury, a finding of guilt in this case may not be based on circumstantial evidence alone unless the proven circumstances are not only consistent with the theory that the defendant is guilty of the crime, but that they cannot be further reconciled with any other logical conclusion. Furthermore, each fact which is essential to complete a set of circumstances necessary to establish the defendant's guilt must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. In other words, before any inference essential to establish guilt may be found to have been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, all the facts or circumstances upon which this inference necessarily rests must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. In addition, if the circumstantial evidence as to any particular count is susceptible of two reasonable interpretations, one of which points to the defendant's guilt and the other two is innocence, it will be your duty to adopt the interpretation which points to the defendant's innocence and reject the interpretation which points to any guilt. If on the other hand, one interpretation of the evidence appears to you to be reasonable and acceptable, and the other interpretation appears to be unreasonable and unacceptable, it is your, and then you have on your 200 jury charge, it says no proper names. Let me make sure. I don't see anything, okay? This is gonna be 200 jury charge for five minutes you all for your mock. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to conclude the jury instructions this afternoon and I have a final thing or two that I want to go over with you and it is important. There are two types of evidence that are generally presented during a trial. And in my experience, juries can confuse the two types if they don't fully understand each of them. Chances are you've heard the word evidence used a lot. Maybe you have found yourself engrossed in watching a crime show on television, or maybe you've served on a jury before and you are familiar that way. There is direct evidence and there is circumstantial evidence. Direct evidence refers to any piece of evidence that can stand alone to prove an assertion. In other words, it provides direct proof of a fact and doesn't require any type of inference. The testimony of an eyewitness is the most common form of direct evidence. When a witness relates something on the stand that he or she directly observed or experienced, they are offering direct evidence of an event. Circumstantial evidence, on the other hand, is a set of facts that, when taken together, they lead to a desired conclusion. Unlike direct evidence, circumstantial evidence doesn't stand alone. It requires the use of logical reasoning to prove a fact. Forensic evidence, let's say like a blood spat, spatter on a wall is a good example of circumstantial evidence. It requires the use of reasoning to connect a suspect to a crime because the blood spatter on its own doesn't prove anything. Now, sometimes a witness will offer testimony that serves as circumstantial evidence of a fact. An example of this might be a witness who saw a suspect fleeing the scene of a crime. While the witness didn't actually see a crime being committed, their testimony can be used to create an inference that the suspect was involved in the crime. I want you to consider the following example, which I feel perfectly illustrates the difference between direct and circumstantial evidence. A hunter is walking through the woods. As he reaches a clearing, he watches a rabbit run into a hollow log. A second hunter enters a clearing in the woods and asks the first hunter if a rabbit has come by. The hunter's observation of the rabbit running by him, him is an example of direct evidence. Now, Let's say that the first hunter doesn't see a rabbit as he reaches the clearing in the woods, but he does see rabbit-like footprints leading up to the hollow log. When the second hunter comes along and asks whether a rabbit has come by, the first hunter can only provide him with circumstantial evidence of the rabbit in terms of the footprints rather than direct evidence because he did not see the rabbit himself. Like most laws, ladies and gentlemen, the rules governing the use of direct evidence vary depending on the jurisdiction, but a common rule is that evidence must be relevant before it can be used in a trial. What I mean by that is that the evidence must be related to the case at trial. In other words, there has to be some proof that the evidence is really what the person says it is. Now, I know I have belabored the facts here, but as I said at the start, it is very important that a jury understand the differences in the two types of evidence. The law makes no distinction between the weight or value a jury is to give to either direct or circumstantial evidence, nor is a greater degree of certainty needed from circumstantial evidence than from direct evidence. 
Your duty as the jury is to weigh all of the evidence in the case. That concludes a part of my instructions on evidence, ladies and gentlemen. And in a moment, I will explain one last thing before I conclude the jury charge instructions to you. You have already met the attorneys and their respective clients. The duty of an attorney is to bring to the courtroom the witnesses and the evidence that will best support their client's side of the case. They are not called upon to be impartial or to be neutral in any sense of those words. Each side will present its version of the facts and will argue the law that is most favorable to its position. During the trial, you will hear the attorneys object to certain testimony or evidence. That is very common in a courtroom. And it is their duty to object out loud anytime they think that evidence is improper or that it is inadmissible. When an objection is made, I may call the attorneys aside up to the bench here to discuss the issue out of your hearing, or I may simply make a ruling. If I overrule an attorney's objection, it means that I feel that the testimony or the evidence is admissible and you jury members will be allowed to consider it. But if I should happen to sustain the objection, it means that I feel that the evidence is not admissible and you will not be permitted to hear it or consider it. In that instance, you will have to disregard the question and you will not speculate about what the answer to the question would have been. You should not become biased against an attorney or the attorney's client because they make objections. In fact, you should never hold anything an attorney does against their client. This is an important point I'm making, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want you to interpret any of my rulings during the trial as a reflection of the merits of the case. They have nothing to do with the outcome of the case, which is something that only you can decide. That completes the jury instruction to you, although there will be more that I will. And we'll get ready for your Q&A. This is going to be your one minute to 25 Q&A before the actual test itself, okay? Starts in the middle. Did your teacher tell you that you had to memorize the whole thing? No, just half of it. Do you remember everything Ms. Carlin said when the class was studying Islam? No, not really. Are there things she said that you don't remember right now? Yes. Do you think that you have a pretty good memory? Yeah, I think so. So what makes you certain that when your teacher talked about that prayer you read, she never said it was a prayer that Muslims say? I remember that she didn't say nothing after that first day. Do you mean the first day that she handed out the prayer to the class? Yeah. And the day she handed out copies of it for the first time, she never once told you it was a prayer that Muslims say? No, I don't think so. Do you remember what she said when she handed it out to the class? Yes, sir. What did she say to the class? She said that we had to memorize parts of it and just to get it in the back of our heads. So when Miss Carlin asked you to have it in the back of your head, did she tell you how she wanted you to do that? She was just like, if you see it, you will know it. Okay, and so your Q&A continues you all. So um, you have Miss Carlin, Islam, TV, Race to Makaya, Rice, Jeopardy, and Jerusalem. And this is going to be then your 225 Q&A, and it starts in the middle for five minutes. Did your teacher often have the class memorize things? Yes. Was this the first time she had asked the class to read a prayer? No. Did she tell the class that she wanted you to memorize it so that she could ask you questions about it later on a test? She said so we could talk about it in class. What did she say that it was? I don't know. I don't remember. Did she say it was the thing that she wanted the study groups to learn? I don't understand. I mean the passage that she asked the groups to learn, okay? Can you repeat the question? Sure. What did Miss Carlin say it was when she handed out the copies to the class? She just said it was a prayer. Did she tell the class anything else about it other than it was a prayer? My mind keeps blanking. If your mind is blanking, maybe you just don't recall what she said about it. Do you recall what she said or not? I know she said to get it in the back of our heads. And by that, you felt she was telling you to memorize it. Yeah. Did she actually use the word memorize? I know she said that. But she might have said something else too, right? I don't know. Is it possible she said something else about it too? I guess so. I don't remember. All right. At some point during the study of Islam in your class, did Ms. Carlin have the students come in during recess to work on their presentations? Yeah. At some point during the study of Islam in your class, did she say that you could get extra credit for giving up an hour of TV on your or your phone at home? Yeah. 
the class was divided into study groups, right? Yes. So was your group affected in some way by whether or not the students in the group participated in that? It didn't affect our grade in the class. Did it affect how your group did in the race to Maka game? Yeah. But it didn't affect anything other than that, right? Right. Ms. Carlin never asked the class to give up food, did she? If you wanted extra credit. She told the class that if anyone wanted extra credit, they could try going without food? Yeah. Do you remember when she said that? I don't remember the date. Do you remember the context in which she said that? No. Do you remember how she said it? No. What do you remember about Ms. Carlin saying that you could go without food? I remember that she said we could. Do you know if anyone in your class gave up food for extra credit? Yeah. Do you know how many students did that? No. Do you know the name of someone who did it? Bryce did. Do you know Bryce's last name? No. Was he in your study group during the Islam unit? Yeah. Did you hear Ms. Carlin say to him that he could give up food for extra credit points? She said it to all of the class the day before. How do you know that Bryce gave up foods for points? He told us. Do you know what he gave up? His lunch. All right. Did part of the study of Islam include doing community service? Yes. Did your group participate in that? Yeah. What did your group do? We only did a little bit because it was almost over by then. So your group didn't finish doing the community service part of the unit. No. But you said you did a little bit of it, right? Yeah. What did your group do for the community service part? Picked up trash. Did you do that on the school campus? Yes. Are there other things that your group did? That was it. How many hours do you think your group devoted to picking up trash around your school? Not very many. Can you give me any sort of an estimate of the hours? I don't know. Do you think you spent more than 20 hours picking up trash? No. Do you think you spent more than one or 10 hours picking up trash? No. Do you think you spent maybe five hours picking up trash? No. So is it fair to say you spent less than five hours picking up trash? Yeah. Okay. Did your class play a game that was like Jeopardy as part of the Islam study unit? Yeah. Do you remember what the game was called? I can't remember. Did your class do presentations as part of the unit? Yeah. Did your group do a presentation in front of the class? Yeah. What did your group choose to do? We gave a talk about Jerusalem. What sort of information did you cover in your presentation? I don't remember. Was it that you had to research information about Jerusalem? Yeah. Did Ms. Carlin provide your group with any handouts for that? Yes. Did you use the handout she gave you to put your presentation together? Yeah. Did you and your group do any research on your own? No. So you only used the handouts Ms. Carlin gave you to put your presentation together? Yeah. Did she give all of the groups in your class handouts to use? Yes. Did your group do an oral report in front of the class? Yes. Did you read the report aloud or did you memorize parts of it? We read it. So each student in your group had a different part of the reports to read? Yeah. Did each student in your group research different parts of the report? Yeah. Did each student in your group write different parts of the report? Yeah. So it was a group effort and you put it on together? Yeah. Do you remember when Ms. Carlin gave you the handouts? No. Do you remember doing an essay on your own as part of the Islam study unit? Yeah. What did you write your essay about? I don't remember. But you do remember writing the essay? Yeah. Do you remember when Ms. Carlin handed out the assignment to the class? No, I don't remember. Do you remember what she said when she handed out the page? No, I don't. Do you remember how much time she gave the class to write the essay? She gave us a couple days. Is there anything else you did in the Islam unit that we haven't talked about today? I don't know. I don't think so. Did your teacher ever ask the class to write a poem about Islam? Oh, yeah. We... Okay, you all, that was very good. Good luck. Um, very good Q&A. I think it's a new one, right, Michelle? Yes. Yes, new Q&A. I think I'm going to... Oh, have we? Okay. Have a great day, you all.